Welcome to Quick Comp, removing blemishes. Under 10 minutes, we're going to show you how to do it. Please buy Evan a coffee. You will need the eye transform node, the Pixel Fudgers filler, and Pixel Fudgers band pass. Links below if you're curious of where to get those. Special thanks to uh, Xavier Bouquet for this uh, demonstration. Uh, again, we are going to be using some of his tools here, Pixel Filler. So I'm going to kind of do my best to demonstrate. I'm sure he would probably do a better job. Um, so anyway, uh, here's the original footage, and we'll go ahead and play it through. Obviously, uh, Evan is in college here. He's got some acne. Uh, so we're going to try to find the frame that is the most non-motion blurred. In this case, it's frame 44. I'm going to set my frame hold to 44, and I'm going to set my vector to store to frame 44. And that's what we're going to paint on. Um, so the first thing we do is we want to get some vector information that, that will basically track the little white dots that we'll paint, and those will be areas where the blemishes are. So if I come to this uh, band pass, it's meant to increase contrast for tracking and specific frequency details. Uh, but obviously, if I have this, I need to bring the saturation node down because there's some kind of strange artifact going on uh, with oversaturated values, I believe. So I got that in, then I got the band pass, and then I got the smart vector information, which is rendering smart vectors. Obviously, that's going to be information that's kept here in this weird disco look. Then we're going to write it out because the stuff is very expensive to kind of play through. You can plug this directly into this smart vector if you wish, but I prefer to write it out, and then I just read it back in uh, right here. So again, you just write this out, write under the read, you read back the footage, and you can see there's nothing in under RGBA, but there is something under the smart vectors. But it's playing back a lot faster now. And that gets plugged into the smart vector information tab. And then we have the uh, actual uh, source coming in with the uh, paint strokes we'll be doing with the roto paint node. And that's going to be put into the pixel fi uh, filler. So we're going to go into the pixel filler here, and we're going to make sure we're on this frame, frame 44, whatever frame we choose. Remember, you got to change that both for vector to store and frame hold. And let's go ahead and make a couple paint strokes. So with my viewer set to the pixel filler, I'll go to my Roto Paint node and make sure I'm painting, not using erase or anything else, and painting white. And we're going to come in here and paint. So my brush size, the harness is about 0.4. I'm on opacity. I'll hold down shift and less mouse drag to make it smaller. So we might want to remove this blemish. It's important to understand how this node works. So if I come in here and do something really crazy, like close up his eyeball here, um, you can see how crazy this gets, okay? And what it's doing um, is basically uh, dividing and multiplying in and blurring and multiplying and kind of bringing this stuff in. So by default, the size is uh, heavily on uh, the height than is the width uh, as far as the kind of blending in. And then you have this angle here which you can change. So instead of zero, I could put this to 90 degrees. Now it's kind of pulling information in uh, normal wise from left to right, as opposed to that. I'll leave this at zero. <clears throat> and currently it's really pulling stuff up and down. So it's up to you. You want to see like if you're going to be wanting to sample something, do you want it to be above and below or left to right. It's also to see the angle of the lighting too. Uh, for instance, if there is a, a light shadow going this way, you want to have a line of the shadow, you might want to change this rotation to match it so that it's pulling in from a certain angle so that you don't lose that sharp line of difference between an area that's lit and, and in shadow. So that's kind of something to keep in mind as you're kind of doing this. I'm going to go ahead and increase my width <coughs> to a couple here, like three. Iterations is the number of divisions, subtract, uh, divisions, multiplications, and blurs. And then the angle, I'm going to go ahead and try to sample something that is left to right. So I will go ahead and put this angle to something like uh, something like 90 degrees. Okay, like that. Okay, so obviously we want to get rid of these two brush strokes because now we know the what exactly this is. So I'll go ahead and delete these. And we're back, and then again, we want to work in very small brush strokes, 0.4 opacity. We are losing the granular detail or the small details wherever we paint, but we want to take this very quietly. So you can see maybe I want to get this little area right here. You can see we're losing, we're, we are losing some details there. And again, I can bring my hardness even further down and go something like that. And you can see there's a blemish there, blemish on his lip blemish on his lip. Let's see what else we got here. There's a little guy right there. 
maybe I don't like this uh, five o'clock shadow you know something like that that might be a little too extreme and that's where you can actually come in here don't forget you know there's many ways to skin a cat in regards to clean up so we can do that now he has this kind of heavy mark across his face here so we're going to try to get rid of some of that um, and I think that's pretty much it. There's also this area right here I might want to hit up just a little bit. So if we want to take a look at the before and after, we can go ahead and do this before and after spiel. You can see the areas that we've cleaned up. And we painted that. If I, I could use this little thing right here is over. And you can see all the little marks I did. And this is a kind of like a, a, a track check, make sure it's tracking good with the vectors. So I'll just hit play and see how my vectors are holding up through this whole process. So if the vectors are not holding on, then you probably want to change up the smart vectors. Uh, vector intensity, uh, might want to change up your bandpass to get more of the detail contrast on the facial hairs, and that'll kind of help uh, push it in there. Now that we've done all this, we need to bring back the details. You can see it's very, very blurry here. If I go ahead and bring the detail down here, you can see like there's no, there's no granularity. The grain has been lost, the small details have been lost and we have to bring that back. So what I went on, when did over here is I did a tracker node on Evan's nose. You can see it's just tracking his nose basically. And I animated, uh, I just basically took this tracker node and, and what I usually do is I put my viewer to two and I will uh, simply come in here and grab one roto node, run tracker and go to the transform information and bring this way up here and take the root folder and uh, come over here and hit control and drag this onto the root folders translation and then I'll draw the rectangle next. So why I'm doing that uh, is because what we're going to do I'm going to come back here so hard to pull these things there we go is what you see is, is there's one side it's basically staying on one side of his face and this was demoed by Xavier so so I'm trying to track both sides. And what this is going to do is create, uh, get those high frequency salty details. So I went ahead and blurred Evan slightly over here. And then I divided it over itself. It's very important that the B side remains uh, the side of the blur, B for blur. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is uh, like your, your actual uh, dark spots or even hairlines will turn white as opposed to black because you want to keep those details. So this this division has given us the low frequency details and you can adjust your blur if you wish uh, that if you're trying to get rid of the big details like the zit. So then I just go ahead and use an eye transform which is on Tony's uh, tool set and I slightly just I use that to translate the information over uh, to the left and use another mask over to the right. And the reason being is that this is this information is kind of borrowing from the mirror over uh, from the left to the right. So if the zit's there, which is a, a very low frequency detail object, we won't inherit the details of the zit even if we try to blur or whatever. So that gets multiplied over the original footage and we'll go ahead and take a look at it. So now if we go ahead and take a look to, at the multiply, we've returned the footage. So one way if you feel like you're not getting enough information there uh, is to come over to the blur and start adjusting the blur too. So you can kind of come in here and see if I feel like, you know, you can see that's getting a little too nutty, but I'm just trying to dial this blur up until I see that the, the granularity is matching. And, and also, you might want to adjust your transforms, you know, because if you see if I don't do the transforms, if there's a big zit there, it's going to inherit that sharp information. Like I'm trying to see where his mole was at. So you can see maybe the mole's showing up. I don't know. You might have to translate it over. So you could just come over here and translate this back and forth uh, to your liking. So that gets multiplied over. And then we have a ref I just have a reformat node here. Push it back into the 4K. And then we come over here with the LUT. This LUT is included. This is just a LUT I threw together. Um, I don't think I really needed it, but <laughs> just try to get you guys into this. Again, you can make this an input process if you wish. To node, make input process, use as input process. And then if you hit IP up here, it'll show up. Then you could just, you don't need this thing at all. 
Uh, but I just threw it in there anyway. So that's it, guys. It's 10 minutes, and hopefully that was good enough. And you can download it, take a look, uh, enjoy it, and learn from it.